Oh, yeah. Guys. Guys, let me tell you. My guest. We have only been streaming now for all of 30 seconds. My guest has already head banged off camera and done the Arsenio Hall move. If that doesn't mean we're not hype, I don't know what does. Are you ready? I'm ready. One minute late. Chris, Chris says I'm one minute late. Chris, that's not true. I am bang on time. You gotta check your clock, buddy. I have, uh, this stuff is all, this is run off like a NASA server. I, I don't even get control over the timing of this stream. It just happens. Uh, that's actually not true. Well, guys, how's everybody doing? Is everybody hearing? Everybody seeing? Is everything, everything going as needs be? Hi, everyone. Just in time. Good vibes. Hey, okay. Oh, wait, I can do these again. Wait, I'm always, these are exciting. Look at these. Yay. I can bring these things up. That's always fun. So... I hope everyone's been having a good week. I, I, but, oh, you know what? I can, let me show you. I got some stuff to show you. While people are still kind of arriving in and getting the notification, let me show you my new exciting thing. Okay. So in, in last week, uh, I had added all this lighting to our little, you know, our little home here in the, the reason live stream. But, um, I also have been, now this is just a side product of my own, just music making. I've been building out my rack here. I've, I have had gear. A lot of my gear has been leaning against walls and I've been having to choose what things will go in my rack and what things are kind of going to be left out of my rack. And I finally got a new rack built, uh, by, uh, audio ra racks, by the way, those guys, I'll shout them out. They did a great job with it. So I got my new rack built. I finally got all my gear in. I finally got a patch bay, which I haven't had a home patch bay ever. I've just only ever used them when I've been in studios and, um, check this out. I, th I, I talked to the patch bay company in Switzerland. It's a company called Geheil Metti. They make these uh, kind of cool, actually, I'll show you. They make different, they're not the normal kind of TT or, or Bantam uh, or TRS patches. They make the, wait, aren't, can I do it here? They look like this. They are a uh, gold plated three pole patch cable that uh, has a million advantages to the normal style. But anyway, I got one of those, but this is the coolest part. When I got it, I called the place to order and they said, we don't have the one you want, but we've got one that does this. Ready? Watch this. Hang on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There. It lights up. Is that not the geekiest add-on advantage to a patch bay? So now in the dark, I can, I'll, I'm going to label my patch bay. I'm going to see all my stuff. I'm pretty excited about it. Maybe you guys are not nearly as excited, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have had good. Tell me what you've been up to in the uh, comments. Um, oh, look at this. We got, we're still singing it. Three weeks later, we're still singing harmony, we sing harmony. I think that's how it went. I don't know. You, you guys tell me. Um, but um, anyway, what's that sexy beast in the back, says Mark. I wonder what he means. Sexy beast. Does he mean there's so many possibilities? So many things. There's so many things behind me. I don't know what you mean, Mark. Uh, but anyway, so, um, oh, disadvantage. Uh, I, Mowgli, I think, is talking about the disadvantage of uh, Gahal Menti, talking about the disadvantage is proprietary. That is true. Let me tell you something. I, for all you guys that, that have Reason and, and, and own a Reason license or whatever your DAWs, I spent more on just these cables that you see on the front of this patch bay. Than, than a Reason license with all its cables in the rack costs. Um, these are not cheap. And, and that's, that's not even the patch bay. I'm just saying just the patch cables. So yeah, not, uh, not, a, not a cheap system to get into, but also one that I won't spend the rest of my life fixing, you know, little patch points that, that bum out all the time. So anyway, um, guys, should we get down to brass tacks? Um, I'm seeing, it looks like everybody's seeing, everyone's hearing. That's all good. So um, uh, I'm just seeing what else here. Um, taxi, members, can you play us something on the banjo? I've done that on streams before and um, I'll do it again, I'm sure. I won't do it now. I can't, I can't, I mean, as much, I really should just make the theme song a banjo thing. I'll just play that every time. But um I think maybe that would be slightly off brand. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but you know, next week, actually, I've got something I'll show you guys next week that 
I actually won't be. Will it be banjo related? It may or may not be. I'll show you that next week. I've got some experimental tech that I've been working with, not reason stuff, uh, outside of reason, some experimental music tech that I've been dabbling into, and it is cool. And I was thinking I'm going to show you guys on the stream. I'll do that next week. So, um, oh, uh, yeah. Hey, by the way, sorry. Here's a quick thing. We're going to get to our guest any second here, but, um, we, uh, this is worth mentioning a beat map got an update today. Reason got an update and included in that update is a beat map update. So if you've got reason, uh, you've got beat map. And if you've got beat map, you've got some new maps to explore. There's two new maps in the beat map update and a couple other nice, uh, features. Like you can set the step length, uh, of the, uh, of, of the pattern right now. So, so I, I don't, don't have it in front of me. I don't know what the numbers are. I think it's 64, 32, and 16 steps. But that's a great one if, for example, if you set it to 16 steps, if, if you ever used Beatmap and you thought that maybe the patterns were too long, like there was a nice variation, but the, the variation was, you know, since it was four bars, it was like too much variation. You can actually shorten the step length of the pattern, and suddenly you can fall into these very easy to follow for the ear 16 step patterns and you can automate that and move it around and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, make sure you just launch reason. You'll get the update notification and you will be in with new maps for beat map. So very cool. All right, guys, should we, um, should we talk to our guest? Because we got some stuff to talk about and stuff to show. And he's going to be a fun guest for you guys. I'm very excited. You've probably seen him recently because he's been doing stuff sort of with us, for us, with you guys. I don't know how you want to describe it. He's become a member of the Reason community, and we are so excited to have him in the Reason community. So uh, why don't we bring him on board? Guys, please welcome my guest. This is Venus Theory. Hey, Cameron, you there? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> he has arrived. Er, right. Howdy doody, buckaroonies. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that's right. That's that's uh Yeah, that's that's my thing. Except you got the you got the cool lights. I got to say so, I should get a vibe. Is that um Oh, oh. I got to pull the proto star. Out. I'll turn on the reactive mode later. That's right. <laughs> We're setting the bar. I will now only have guests on who have reactive mode lighting. That's that's my my new requirement. And um, reactive patch bays. That's that's right. That yeah, oh, that's what I should do. I should get that thing up on a a reactive thing. So, um, I was going to ask you, so yeah, th this is a thing, right? With the YouTubes, you guys all kind of come up with catchphrases and stuff. And like, is that, is that happen naturally? Or is that now a thing where it's like, Oh, I got to figure out my little shtick. I think to some degree, yeah, there's a, there's a shtick aspect to it, but I think it's also branding, um, which is a big thing as an artist, you know, you want to represent a personality an idea, right? A, you know, way of doing things so you know something that's kind of disarming and dumb you know like howdy doody buckaroonies <laughs> you know i think that helps easy into the fact that like okay so now we're gonna record a toilet and turn it into a base yeah right right <laughs> right you know i've um there's that guy um uh, davy 504 does the base tutorials and stuff and i mean he's made a whole i mean his entire world is based around that personality that he created for the streams that's sort of like a very stern you know, yeah. uh, sort of thing that he does. And uh, it started to now influence, I'm starting to see other people sort of take on his affect. And it's like, Jesus, that's like, we, we may have a, a new, a whole, like musicians are going to be known <laughs> as these very stern slap, these, you know, he'll just borrow yeah. all of his, uh, like slap like I'm seeing other people say now. And it's like, geez. Oh yeah, punch, punch that like button yeah. in the face, bros. <laughs> Yes, yes. Be sure to ring that bell and join the notification squad. That's right. That's right. And I mean, to that, there's there's also a degree of like irony to it where, you know, like I, I wanted to do morning coffee with Cameron just because it sounds like a talk show. And yeah. I just thought that was hilarious. But yeah, I mean, I think it's just part of our like overarching theme there's a, of there's, stuff. There's a musician um, named Raina Del Cid um, and she's got a channel and she does a morning coffee thing. It's not like a talk show. It's like... um. I can't remember. It's just, she'll just perform a song. It's her usually and a, mm. another member that's in her band named Tony Lund, Lundgren, I think is her name. Um, but anyway, both really fantastic musicians, but they, they do the thing where they'll just do a cover song usually every week and they're drinking coffee. And it's, I think it's called something like coffee. I can't remember what it's called. Sunday morning coffee or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good, you know, the, the consistent, that's the thing I'm, uh, I think YouTubers are now caught on to is that like, 
it doesn't have to be a big gesture, but you got to do something on a repeated basis to sort of keep yeah. people understanding that like, oh, I exist and I'm around and it's I'm and something it's, memorable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how long have you been uh, on YouTube now actually making content? Uh, I want to say like two years, like actually seriously, because I kind of started it by accident and was just like kind of bored one day. Mm. And then for the first couple of months, you know, it was just a thing. And then it kind of started like snowballing a bit. And I was like, oh, I should, you know, I should like dive into this a bit more. So I took some time away from work and kind of put more effort into it. And then, you know, it became serious enough to where I was like, okay, I need to start building an identity and a brand and right you know making this an actual thing and then it became like my job <laughs> which was crazy is that so you're now full-time you know, sort of on the on the content creation yep exactly so i do my youtube channel i make youtube content for other companies i do video production stuff a lot of sound design you know preset banks and sounds and stuff like that and then um some kind of like consulting ish stuff too right you know they right. send me a a plug in or a thing and you know i play with it and say like oh do this and that kind of thing so that's i basically the, get to play with stuff all day i'm that's like the, the dream. luckiest guy in the world yeah, yeah that is that is the dream I've, in fact you know people watching um who doesn't love when ryan makes a, a an outdated 80s reference but this is like in the movie big when tom hanks has a job where he just plays with the toys all day long and uh <laughs> and tells people what he thinks of the toys you're, you're yeah. living that dream Soon you're going to have a loft apartment in New York, and uh, I don't know. I, I got. I can't remember other plot points from the movie Big, but that's okay because no one else remembers the movie. So. <laughs> I'm going to dance on a giant piano. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I remember that. And then what was it? Zol- Zoltar. Zoltar. Right? Yeah, Zoltar, Zoltar. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You, maybe you made a wish on Zoltar, and you, that's how you got to uh, yeah. <laughs> play with plugins all day. Um, that is cool. But so, and do you find it? Um, uh, is it is it almost a little bit schizophrenic when you're trying to when you make content for yourself? I mean, I guess that's you get to decide what you do, both yeah. topically, how you present yourself, and all that stuff. And then when you're doing stuff uh, for an, for another company, I guess you kind of ha- you're representing them. So yeah, I guess there's a certain amount of kind of fitting into their mold. Oh yeah, I mean, there's like a tone of voice and a way you present things and whatever. And then you know, even with my own channel, like I, as much as I would love to have free reign to do whatever I want, you know, there's also part of it of. I need to make sure things are searchable and indexable, shareable, but also at all times, no matter who I'm working for with, I'm representing my own brand. Mm. So, you know, although I might mold more into one teaching style with one place and then on my channel, you know, it's a bit more fun and whatever, you know, ultimately it's like I'm representing someone that people want to work with. So that's the big thing I have to keep in mind all the time, but it is super hard to remember like the way that certain companies want things, and, right? You know the right. style and things like that. I'm um, but, I'm going to slide myself over here on the um, window and then bring up some comments here. Um, there's some chatter about voiceover, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to assume they're talking about your voice because they're definitely not talking about this voice being the voiceover guy. So um, I actually got into that around the age of I think 13 or 14. Is that a right? Little bit. Um, yeah, I, I 13 around, or 14. Did you say? Yeah, so it was around like fifth or sixth grade. I I kind of had like a, a cold or something for a bit, and then I lost my voice for a while, and then it came back sort of like this, and it oh, just wow. never... But, you know, I thought like, oh, I'm sick, because, you know, like, I, I like oh, I sound like I'm sick. Yeah. And it just never went back up. So it was really fun, though, because in sixth grade, you know, everyone's like reading their book reports of like, you know, this is... The, something about something and then i walk up and i'm like glencoe chapter 32 the geography of china <laughs> my teachers hated me <laughs> it but is- then i got into like some radio spots where i was like you know you're listening to 1023 the dog yeah something katie perry you've got it you've got that thing <laughs> that's my the gosh. only qualification so that is so that's what I was missing. I missed out in life on that moment when you were 13, 14 and you got sick for a bit and then your voice stopped doing whatever mine does, which is uh, this sort of I don't know, I still still sound 14, I think. But uh, I think it's funny though cuz I always get comments on my videos of like what plugins are you using and it's like the genetics. Yeah, I just right, permanently, right. I permanently sound like I'm selling you a Ford F150. I have no choice. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I I had a thing when I started doing a lot more narration. You know, originally when I started doing work with Reason Studios, um, we would I would write videos, and then we we had uh, a narrator, primarily this guy named mm. Frank, who do a lot of our narration. 
And then we started transitioning over to to me doing some, and we had this other artist, Ty Gardera, who does some of our narration. But um, but when I started actually recording, you know, I'd write something and then I'd actually record it. I, I noticed that yeah, I had to sort of fight myself from doing, first of all, from doing the narrator voice so that was a thing yeah. like in my early videos you know i mean if you go back and watch them you're gonna hear me like what would it sound like if someone who actually knew what they were doing was reading this you know and it's it's a it's it's a cringy thing now to listen to <laughs> but um the other thing was i had to sort of come to terms with the tenor of my voice and not i had basically i had the urge to pitch shift i was like I, yeah. I, I really, maybe I'll just knock it down a couple semitones and no one will know. But I, then I did it and I was like, no, everyone will know because it's just the good old 20 decibel bass shelf. Yeah. You know, no, no one will be any other wiser. Right, right, right. No, the biggest thing is like, it's just like, especially when you're narrating though, there's a really like specific mood you have to be in to like read and pace yourself and whatever. But the big thing is like, if you talk from here, that's the biggest tip I can give people is like, we naturally tend to, you know, inflect. Yeah, yeah here and it's yeah. like you really want to if you calm down for a second you'll naturally have a bit more of a, like a you know big burly narrator voice that's right that's right except if i do that i sound like a whale or something where it just goes down to like <laughs> oh if you actually yeah, yeah right right you you just stay normal <laughs> so now um stefan over in stockholm is requesting an, an in in a world if we could get one oh <laughs> uh, let's see <clears throat> In a world of VST plugins, one rack stands alone, featuring the power of Europa, the unique shape shifting synthesizer. I need my I need my pop filter. Because <laughs> you gotta get right oh up. Oh my on. god. Presenting the Red Rum drum computer. <laughs> Something like that. So good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um well It's way too much fun to go through the drive through. <laughs> Welcome to McDonald's. What can I get you? I'll take a double cheeseburger. Thank you. Right. Well, this is like, um, <laughs> you know, there was a guy that went viral. He was, uh, he was a, a homeless guy. He was on the side of the road and he had a sign begging for change. And then he. Oh, he, yeah. Um, and uh, then he, he you know, it, it sort of, I hope, I hope that it, w it was a life changing for him long term. But at the time, it certainly was. I mean, he got a house and he got jobs. And he was getting work again. But it, yeah, that was the thing. Like he was going on talk shows and like they were just having him sort of do the most mundane things with that voice. So, um, but anyway, well, listen, so now your work in video and your narration, and all that stuff, that actually comes via not not via video, but via your work as a musician and your interest in music. I yeah. mean, that's, that's sort of primarily what got you into this world, right? Um, yeah, it was kind of this weird snowball of like, once things started growing, then people started contacting me and then they find me doing stuff with other people. So then I end up kind of like, you know, th there's this constant feedback loop, which is cool though, because I get to do so many different things, which like, I, you know, you really need that variety sometimes to just, challenge yourself yeah that is that's true that's that's an interesting thing i find as someone who does video and does music that actually switching tracks is some sometimes the most effective kind of creative creativity lubricant you know a, a writer's block mm. in a way that when i'm I, you know they they're both creative pursuits but they're so different that that it helps me kind of like not feel stuck and and in in certain habits and stuff like that but how did you get into to doing music? What was your early forays into music? Um, being annoying. Uh, <laughs> so when I was really young, my, my great grandpa was a musician and he died before I was born. But when I was really young, my dad and my dad still has these. He has his records on a wall. And I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. That like, you know, my grandpa made a record. Mm. So it was always something that just kind of stuck in my mind. And my dad has his guitar still to this day or one of them. And uh, I always thought that was cool. So then now, you know, wait, it was the, like, no, the nerds must ask, do you know what kind of guitar it is? Uh, it's a Gibson uh, Southern Jumbo. And uh, because of the factory fires, there's no accurate date on it because oh. they lost all the serials. So it's like a 50 something. OK. Um, and I actually have a, a 52 Gibson LG zero I bought for 80 bucks. So that's wow. pretty neat. That's yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good score. But yeah, my grandpa was a musician. I always thought that was super awesome. And, uh, you know, it was like banging on pots and pans. My mom bought me a harmonica once and immediately regretted that. Um, so that was always just kind of a thing where I've just I've always felt this pull to, like, make noise. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. stuff. I don't know. Like, I've always just thought sound was interesting. And then um, around 
I think maybe age of nine ish or so, 10, maybe I uh, got a guitar. Um, I originally wanted to be a drummer, but I got a guitar, learned guitar, stuck with that. Um, and I lived in this really tiny town, so there was no one to play with. Mm. You know, I, I could never like get into a band. So I was like, well, I, you know, after I learned guitar, but I was like, I want to make a song. You know, I want to make a record. So then it was, OK, I guess I have to learn to play other instruments because <laughs> there's nobody else to play with. So, you know, started learning drums and bass and, you know, cello and other random things as I could pick them up and noodle with them. And then I got was like, OK, now I know this stuff, but now I need to record it. <laughs> right. So that's how I got into production. And eventually, you know, because I, I was very much a purist where I was like, electronic music isn't real music. And, <laughs> Blah, blah, oh, blah. we've all been there. We've all yeah. done it. We've all had the moment we look back and want to slap ourselves for being, being exactly. elitist through ignorance, you know. But that was the thing is that, that funny enough, that was what drove me into getting where I got to, because there was a very formative point where someone my dad worked with went on Napster back in the day when that was a thing. Or maybe it was LimeWire. It was around that era. Gave me a CD of Buckethead's Colma, if you know that album. And... uh that was like one of the biggest things to me because prior to that, you know, I had heard the stuff my mom and dad listened to, you know, the Beatles and like, you know, White Zombie and all this other stuff, Sabbath, Blood Zeppelin. And, you know, that was kind of what I knew. And it was all lyrical and straightforward. But once I got Coma, it, it was this moment where I was like, OK, so music is expressing something to me without someone going, you know, I am mad. I am sad, you know, yeah. something like that. So that was re really got me more into like the creative aspect of it, of, you know, the more artsy side of things. So then I got into like really weird stuff and, you know, some of the more avant-garde side. So that was when I got really into like making music and trying to create something new. Right. You know? um, and that was just always like the thing I wanted to do was just make something. <laughs> so, but you're, you're, earliest uh in intro into music was that i'm mean, playing guitar is just kind of straight ahead rock pretty much yeah my dad taught me bad to the bone i distinctly remember this my dad taught me the riff to bad to the bone and i came back about an hour later and said dad you're playing it wrong <laughs> and i showed him because I, <laughs> I sat in my room for like an hour just practicing you know what he showed me because he, he plays guitar a bit um and he showed me and yeah, I came back and I was like, dad, that's wrong. This is how you do it. Wow. And then, you know, from there, it was always just, I, I wanted to get better at it. And I like, and that's always my thing too, is I, I just have that mindset where I just want to understand something. Yeah. So then it became, you know, okay, so like this sounds really cool, but why does it sound cool? Or, you know, this sounds really sad. Why does it sound so sad? Yeah. And, you know, from there it just spiraled out into me recording trees and turning that into stuff. It's a really, it's a really simple, you know, to say it that way is a really simple thing, but the sort of the curiosity that is behind that actually can be an incredible driver for, Oh yeah. For learning, you know, um, why does something sound sad? Yeah. Like that, just that answering that question opens you up into certain music theory avenues of minor keys versus major keys and, and sound design avenues in terms of, I don't know, pads and, and ambient textures. And, and, and to me, it's like the philosophy of it too, of, you know, what, what is it about a sound that can make it inherently feel lonely? You know, what, how do we extrapolate that from, you know, a percussion loop? Yeah. You know, why does this sound scary and why does this influence this, you know, emotional response? Right. And I just think that's like the coolest thing ever that, you know, we can listen to a melody and, you know, suddenly we're five again playing in the yard and we remember these things. And that's like one of the craziest things to me. Yeah. That, you know, sound is that powerful. Right. That's right. Yeah. I, I, there are. Um, I mean, even in the early parts of the stream here, someone was referencing a, um, a, a song we were singing three weeks ago in a stream and stuff. The way that, that si sounds bind to memory is, is an amazing mm. um, sort of thing. It was a song I was just listening to. I used to live in Liverpool, England uh, for a number of years, and the, the songs that I listened to when I lived in Liverpool are just embedded now with Liverpool memories, you know? And so, and when I hear that song, it's like, oh, I'm I'm back, you know, walking down Bold Street and and headed to the you know the the local pub that I used to go meet friends at and stuff. It's it's they're so in the same way the smells are are tied to uh, yeah. Are you? And that's a crazy thing because that was like a big influence on me too. Is like that's how a lot of my music comes to me. Is like I've I've always had this weird feeling like the wires are just crossed. 
So it's like I always just I see something or, you know, whatever, and I have to, like, make that because I've always been terrible at lyrics. <laughs> so it was always, you know, like I need to turn this feeling into, you know, not only a song, but to me, like a song is an experience. It's a moment stretched out like what's that short story, the guy on the ledge where it's it's a, you know, a short story, but it's taking place over the span of like 10 seconds. Oh, and, you okay. know, I think that's the you know, that's the thing is trying to elicit everything you're feeling about something in the form of, you know, a journey from right, A to B. Right, right. So, but you, um, you, you obviously quickly or, or some semi quickly transitioned from sort of being on the learning curve of learning guitar or, or getting into production as a necessity, you know, your yeah. solitude got you into production in a way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but you, you transitioned, uh, I guess into sound design. That's almost a sort of, it's it's kind of taking control of the situation from being a learner to being i mean i guess you're the always a doer student. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, exactly you're, you know like it's if you're if you're always on the learning curve you're just going to constantly be going ah, i wonder where i can find cool new sounds that someone has made for me but you turned it around you started making your own sounds and stuff but what was that uh what was that transition into that uh, being a broke musician and sample packs are expensive. <laughs> okay. That's, a, <laughs> you know, cause it's like, not I, a bad reason. I did music for a long time and it's like, you know, I played in bands and toured and all that. And it's like, I, I live my life in the back of a Chevy Astro eating hot pockets. And then, you know, eventually kind of like got a more proper job and whatever. And I wanted to make music and sample packs are expensive. You know, it's hard. Cause this was, this is predating splice and, you know, services like that. Right. So it's like, you know, 50 bucks for a sample pack is fine, but you know, when there's a hundred sample packs, I want, that's a lot of money totally. that I just don't have. And and also there's things where, I mean, this is obviously part of what Splice came in to solve, but like, I, there's been times where it's like, oh, I need, I want like a stomp. I want like feet stomping on a floor. And it's like, okay, yeah. here's a sample pack that has 500 other things, but it's got the thing I want. And it's like, ooh, I really, that's the perfect one. I can hear it. I want that one. So you, you get it. And it's like, I mean, back in the day, you know, you used to buy an album for like the one song you wanted off of it. And that's yeah. like the next thing. It's like buying a sample pack for the sample, the one sample you want on it, you know? And that was like one of those things where a lot of the sounds I'm drawn to in my music, you know, and just the sounds I like in general, it was one of those things where I would hear the sounds I was getting in sample packs and you know it was like someone just clicking spoons together and i'm like well i can do that so then you know i grab my microphones go to my kitchen record spoons for an hour bring it back chop it up done and then i got my my uh my handy dandy field recorder ah. i bought one of these years ago and i i carry this thing with me everywhere i look like a psychopath when i'm out in public because i'm just constantly like you know i got right. my headphones on in the middle of a grocery store, like smacking bananas together. And there's someone that's like, can I get that? And I'm like, hold on. This is going to be a great drum. Shut up. <laughs> so you know what I used to do? It reminds me, <clears throat> this is actually when I lived in Liverpool for, uh, uh, in, a, in a roundabout way here, this is the same era, but I used to, I want to do a lot of field recordings. I was getting into a lot of post-production audio, you know, audio for film and television and stuff. And I was learning to do that stuff. I wanted a lot of field recordings of just different spaces and I didn't want to be the weirdo walking around with like the coincident pair of shotgun <laughs> mics, you know, with rye coat, you know, the whole thing. So what I used to do is on my uh, recorder, my field recorder, I would plug, I had these little Sony headphones. I would plug them into the microphone input. And if people don't know, uh, uh, in a weird way, I won't go into a tangent here. Microphones and headphones are the same thing. They're transducers. One of them takes sound coming into it and converts it into electricity. The other one takes electricity and converts it back into sound. But they're the same thing. So you literally were able to plug the, the headphones into the microphone input of this recorder. And then I just put them on my neck and I'd walk around and they were stereo microphones. It's like a stereo binaural microphone, basically. I just would flip the cups out. And then I could just, you know, I could go into shops. I could walk down the street. I'd go to the park and at least be not super weirdo guy i maybe was the weird guy that was lingering at a long you know at a, a traffic stop too long or something but <laughs> um, i at least wasn't a super weird guy but but when did you so can i ask what sort of era how long ago is this you started getting into the field recording thing um oh man that was probably right around the time i went to college and quit that that was probably around 20 12 2013 i started getting more into it and then like i said you know the sounds i was drawn to it was like i can make that and then it just progressively grew where i was like you know i can make a kick drum like it's just yeah you know low rumbly stuff 
So then it, you know, was learning to synthesize these things and how do I treat these sounds to make them sounds like the ones in the sample packs and yeah. how do I transform this loop? How do I resample? How do I make a wavetable? How do I, and you know, again, right. it's that curiosity where I was like, this is super cool. I sure wish I knew how to do that. And then I will obsess over it until I like figure it out or at least like have enough of an idea to where I'm dangerous with it. Right, right. There's a comment um, from uh, Kay Enzo. Um, that says, I can't wait until I get a chance to get a field recorder, but I would, I would uh, tell him and anyone else that if you have a, you're going to, yeah, there you, you go. Got one. <laughs> you've got one. We more or less, if you've got a smartphone and pretty much we all do, you've got a field recorder in your pocket. It might be a mono field recorder with an omnidirectional microphone, but it's a field recorder. And, and it's certainly with the type of sound design that you do, you could take one of those and and do a lot of what you do i mean it's not you're not you're twisting and bending these sounds and manipulating them and so the the original fidelity of the recording is almost the least important aspect yeah of the sound right and that's a great way to understand it too is like looking at things not as face value but as a series of components like i, I just did a, a sample pack for myself the other day um, using kong and the rack funny enough where i transformed a bunch of kick drums into a bunch of rim shots because mm. A snare is a transient followed by a tone followed by some ringing air. And a kick drum is largely the same thing. A kick drum is going to have some really snappy transients. It's going to have a tone and a body, and it's going to have that airy tail with the room reverb and whatnot. Right. So by pitching that way up and filtering it a bit, you know, done. Yeah. And that's, yeah, the biggest thing is just not not listening to something and going, well, this sucks and throwing it out. It's, you know, work with what you have. And I find that there are ex extremely powerful things to understand about the limitations you face and there's so many creative ways to approach things and if all else one of the biggest things i've learned from my dad in a bar watching a couple of idiots playing guitar funny enough was that if all else i learned what not to do hmm. you know if i if i recorded something and it's totally garbage i say okay that was a waste of time that didn't work right Therefore, I'm not going to waste time and effort doing that again, especially when there's a deadline and money on the line. <laughs> right, you know? right. But that's, you know, that's, it's a, I think it, there was a, what was it, Thomas Edison or whatever. I, I learned 700 ways not to make a light bulb. That's, <laughs> right. And I think that's yeah. the biggest thing with sound design, especially, is don't sit there and say, you know, this is hard and I'm never going to understand this. Just, you know, always try and take something away from a session, sound design, music you know, going to school, whatever it is you're doing, always try and have that approach, you know, of I learned what not to do if all else. Right, right. And and I think what people will find over time is that those those moments when you have to sort of like, that's sort of like you're, you're, you're kind of patting yourself on the back. It's okay. It's all right. You, you, at least you learned what not to do. Those moments become yeah. fewer and far between. And often a lot of times what you, you might be thinking you're headed down a like, well, this isn't, this is going terribly, but at least I'm learning what not to do. And all of a sudden you might do something that, you know, something happens, a happy accident or a little thing. And you now suddenly this is an awesome thing that you're working on. And you, you just kind of had to see it through, you know, there's, I think we can be our own worst roadblocks with our, critique of like this isn't going the way i want and you know what you want it to sound like and it doesn't and you just give up and you you know or you don't even try so I, I think it's a a powerful thing to deal in abstraction too where like um so when i was really little i went to uh what do they call that like sunday school mm -hmm. and um the teacher handed us a straw and she said look at uh, look through this straw and what can you see and then she says, take it away. And now what can you see? And I think that's a really powerful idea is, you know, just learning to expand your horizons and challenge yourself to, you know, not only see things through, but also look at it through a different perspective. Yeah. You know, because there's so many ways to approach something. Right. And it's just crazy. And, you know, and pushing into the more like avant-garde aspects of things like the, the lowercase genre. There's what is it? Uh, Forms of paper is a record where it's just a series of recordings of paper really really amplified and that is music mm. you know so i think that's a great way to think of things too is just really stop trying to you know look through the lens of what you are making and look through the lens of what you could make yeah yeah that's that's ab that's absolutely true and it's interesting you talk about the things like that paper thing a lot of times for people out there that may be um 
either in their in their own routines or they're feeling stuck by the process they're at. If you give yourself you give yourself, you can assign it to yourself, your own brief of like, I'm today I'm gonna make music, but I'm you know, I'm only going to use this or I'm only gonna, you know, I'm gonna work in this particular way. I mean, it could be it could be as as sort of esoteric as like I'm only gonna use paper to make sounds or something, but it could also be, you know, I'm going to well, as a for example, next week I'm going to be on the stream next week, and my it's going to just be me, uh, no guests next week, and I'm going to be making music with you guys, and I'm actually going to be doing that exact thing where I'm going to set myself the task of I'm going to make music only using players. I'm not going to sequence anything, and I'm just going to see how much different stuff I can wring out of players as the music making tool, and um, things like that. You'd never know what happens when you sort of set one of those arbitrary tasks for yourself and what music can result from it. So should we, I, I, you know, we're talking about sort of these field recorders and these things that you do. I wonder if we should maybe show people some of the stuff that you actually do with these because. Yeah. Cause let's, it's cool. Let's make some noise and stuff. Yeah. Let's make some noise. Um, <laughs> All right, let me, I'm going to check in with the chat while you here. get things up and running over there. Um, All right. Oh, I'm getting a spam call. Do I answer? <laughs> <laughs> you, usually I answer those spam calls because, you know, they're like, we're calling about your car's extended warranty and I'll, I'll follow through till I get a person. And then I'll right. be like, city morgue, you bag him, we tag him. How you doing? You know, I got to say, by the way, you know? I speaking of uh, um, spam and stuff like that, I am getting harassed by Antelope Valley Nissan. Some guy bought a car <laughs> at Antelope Valley <laughs> Nissan and he put my email address I assume by mistake, some little letter transposition or something. And so now I'm getting all of his like, hey, Pete, like, how you liking your new car? <laughs> hey, Pete, want to come in for your service? Hey, Pete, you know, oh, I've, I've been getting it for months. And actually, I'm surprised after six months, they're already trying to sell him a new car. They're like sending him the like trade in values and stuff. And I was like, leave Pete alone. He just wants to drive his car. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to start like a Twitter trend hashtag Pete Nissan. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Free Pete. <laughs> Although the th that's the thing. It's actually it, Pete doesn't realize he's living this glorious life where he's not getting bothered at all because I'm the one getting bothered. And I don't even have the car. <laughs> uh, now, so let's let's um, we got something. The elephant in the room right up front. You are a uh, a reason user, but you come to reason via the reason rack plugin. Your dog of choice. Yes, is, I, I wish I was cool enough to use Reason. Well, we'll, we'll always is welcome Bitwig. you. I use Bitwig for pretty much everything. Gotcha. Yeah, I've, I've tried to get into Reason, and like I know people that use it, and it's one of those things where like I, when I watch someone, you know, like the, the other streams, you know, like Protostar or um, Kickback Couture or whatever, and watching, you know, a, a Reason user use Reason is really inspiring and really cool, and then I open it, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Because, right. you know, I've used other DAWs and Reason has its own kind of workflow, which is really cool, but it's hard for me to like wrap around because I've done, you know, things such a sure. certain way for so long, which that was like the weird thing with Bitwig. That was totally by accident. I, I didn't think I would like it at all. I tried it and I was hooked. Really? I, I come from Mixcraft, Cubase, Audacity, um, you know, pretty much everything. And every DAW is different. You know, everyone has its advantages and disadvantages. Bitwig isn't my only DAW. Just like, you know, we all have different plugins. If one did everything, we would all have it. Right. You know, it's all, it, to me, it's always the task at hand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I've never found one DAW that I can do literally everything. And there's always something I need something else for, especially in the sound design world, because, you know, like Bitwig doesn't do surround sound. And if I'm doing something with that, I have to jump into, sure. you know, something else that supports it. Well, you are you are the prototypical person that was in mind with the Reason Rack plugin, which is that you know um, instead of telling people uh, two things: one, instead of telling people that Reason will do everything for all people at all times, that's not that's not true, um, or um, that if you want our sounds, you have to switch the DAW that you may have spent the last eight years in. That shouldn't be the case either. So that was sort and of that's the why I was so hyped when it came out because I was like, finally, because, <laughs> you know, there's like so many cool things and reason I've always wanted. And then like the rat came out. and I was like, yes. <laughs> and then I got my update, too. I, I wish I would have known about that. I could have played with the beat map. Oh, yeah. There I'll you go. That there, that's yeah. We'll use that as our uh, uh, little reminder for people. There is an update available. Just launch reason and you can update within reason. You'll get beat map and the new maps. But 
So, uh, but so you're yeah, so you're running it in Bitwig. Um, yes. Does that run? That runs as a VST, I guess. Is that's what they're? It's not AU. Right? Yeah, Bitwig is VST. Gotcha. And then I I think they want to add AU support eventually, but I don't know if that's like gonna happen or if that was just some chatter on the like forums or whatever. Right. Right. Well, um, let me find uh, something we can work with here. Cool. Yeah. So. As you can see, all of these are like my personal folders of stuff because I'm always out recording things. And then, you know, sometimes they become sample packs. Sometimes it's sample packs I keep for myself, like the uh, the kicks to rim shots I was talking about. These are kick drums okay. that became rim shots. Let's might take a sec to play. Yeah. Wow. They really so, do sound like uh, rim shots. Yeah, and that's the fun thing with sound is you can just do so many weird things with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, this is like a, a pack here of just a bunch of stuff. Some leaves. Some uh, drums. And so you can. you make these packs in their... Effectively, that's a fairly raw form. I mean, it's not like a, a raw field recording, but you've done the... You've cropped them and faded and all that stuff. Yeah, so I, I kind of always try to keep the raw session so i do have some like the raws of one of my sample packs here so this is the entire oh, let's take a listen. recording this is like an asmr thing i feel like if you were to narrate like a uh, some uh <laughs> bedtime uh just, story just read the reason manual <laughs> oh please do <laughs> yeah, the, reason reason 12 coming with the official audiobook ASMR edition. <laughs> but yeah, so I keep the raws because I always want that material to work with later just because, you know, there's like 20 million ways you can transform a sound. So I don't want to transform it and then commit it. And then I lost the original. You know, I try and keep the original stuff just so I can reprocess it and have it. And then those become you know, more official samples and designed things. Right. So like I, I went hiking a couple weeks ago, created some cool things. I made some kick drums out of a bridge, some metal kicking some trees. Don't kick trees. It's not nice. <laughs> and then, you know, there's bathtub BBs from a airsoft gun books cookie cutters there's wow. sound is all around you and it's yeah. super fun to play with wow and especially too like if you're like i like i said i i always want to like create stuff but sometimes you're just not feeling making music you know because like sometimes you open the door and you're just like nah. so you know just sitting down and making a bunch of sounds for yourself is like a ton of fun and then you have a bunch of unique sounds that nobody else has which is pretty cool right right there's a um a uh, comment uh, from Stefan, I'm very interested in the Nam recordings. Oh yeah, so is I that got you to on go the show NAM. floor? Yeah, on the Nam show. Uh, um, so for people, just for people watching the Nam show, is the uh, is a National Association of Music Merchandisers, or merchants, something like that. And it's uh, I think so. It's the big trade show. It's the Comic Con of music tech, or the um, the GDC of music tech, basically, where everybody gets together. You see the latest stuff. If you haven't caught that yet you'll be seeing it i'm sure soon enough on your radar uh so it's also a chaotic world of cacophony <laughs> so. do not ever go to the drum floor man <laughs> that was that was a mistake i wanted to go down to look at some of the guitars and stuff and there's like a thousand people crashing cymbals together and banging on stuff and like my ears were ringing for like worst, two days worst place to be best place to be though i'll give you my nam survival tip if you've ever you, you've had it enough and you can't take any more noise Go to the like the violin and cello section, like super chill. Or the uh, downstairs in the basement, there's an area where they have exotic woods and stuff. There's no sound going on there. It's totally silent. So uh, yeah, there's some there's some quiet spots, which is good. But so what is but yeah? I, so what do we have in the, I, in the name recording? Uh, that's a restaurant I was in. Uh, uh, that was the day I was traveling. So this is just you know some uh, walla. Yeah, like film production stuff. Um, but I use this stuff in my music all the time because I think part of your music is telling your story because your music is an expression of your identity and your 
experience in life. So, you know, uh, taking sounds around you that are personal to your story and your journey is a great way to inject yourself into your music. So, Absolutely. You know, like these, these things are th- things I remember. And, you know, it's me giving a mood, you know, right? Like I, I was at an airport and I was, you know, tired. So I can get an airport sound and I can make this slow kind of smoky beat around it, you know? Absolutely. Um, I had a, I had a friend who uh, made his album and he sat in his apartment in London and he, he had his little samplers and his drum machines and stuff. And he set it by the window and he'd, he'd open his windows in the summer and, and work on music and make the album. And he did it the whole, made the whole album that summer. And then he went into the studio to mix it. And when he got into the studio and started mixing it, he was like, this doesn't, it's not sounding right. I'm missing something. I'm missing like the, the album. I swear these songs were ready to go, but now they feel kind of empty and just not right. And so he went home and he started, you know, kind of tweaking his mixes. And he was like, I, there's not much to tweak. They're actually, they're fine. I don't understand. Now they feel fine again. They feel full and they rich. And, and, and then he, he went back and forth a couple of times and it took him a while before he realized it was the sound of the street outside his window, the traffic going by the, birds, whatever, just city rumble was the thing that actually he was missing. And so he actually went back to uh, home and he made a field recording out his window and he took it in the studio and then he mixed his, his album with the sound of the London streets outside. That was like the the fifth Beatle basically on his album was, <laughs> was missing. So yeah, that's, uh, that stuff can be great. What else uh, What else is in that NAMM folder? Is it a lot of wallet kind of stuff? Or? Huntington Beach, California. Oh. Oh. Oh, so that's a good tip. If you if you get into sound design, um, obviously this is named like mono one. That means nothing to me. So when I'm recording, I'll often you know metal bench take two, yeah. and just record. So that way I know what it is. So then obviously I'll trim that out. So this was a uh, Huntington Beach, California. Something about the beach. some kicks and textures some more sticks or something ocean airplane stereo like nice wide stereo ocean yeah some little kid walking by i don't know right (laughs) some something but yeah and then like you know i did i did some when it was raining That's great. Or pork chops, because that sounds a lot like rain. It reminds me, I was uh, filming with a, a musician. We made a video uh, with this guy named Daniel Snow, who's in New Mexico. We were filming him recording a song and doing it in reason. While we're recording, it started to rain outside, and he, like... It was like a fire drill. He just was like, oh my God, it's raining. And he ran to the door and he started <laughs> stringing cables and getting mics outside to record it. And and I was just trying to kind of capture him as he was doing it. But he was like, this isn't going to last long. It never lasts long. It never happens in Albuquerque and it's never going to last long. We got to get this. We got to get this. And no sooner did he set up and get maybe two minutes of rain and it was done. It That's why raining. these are the best because you don't have to run all the cables. And I always have this thing with me. And I am that guy too. Like I'll be talking to my wife about something, and she'll like, you know, she'll be making dinner and hit the pans together. And I'm like, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. And I got to run and get this. I'm like, okay, do it again. Right, right, right. And, and then she yells at me. She's like, "Will you just eat dinner?" I'm like, "No, dude, I got to make beats." Right, amazing. <laughs> mm. But yeah, uh, what were we doing? We're going to make some sounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can just hang out. We can just chit-chat. I'm, I'm happy to do that. But no, we should we should make some sounds. Um, okay, so let's get a... Let's get a Kong. Because Kong is always good for this kind of stuff. And let's just reset the device. Uh, so I got some drawers. I don't know... I think that was a dresser I was refinishing one summer. Okay, just tapping and, on it. Uh, I, probably, I think. <laughs> I maybe. guess that's, right, that's the thing. It doesn't actually matter how the sound was made. That's what the sound is. So we can easily turn this into a kick drum. So uh, one of the big things in Kong is the pitch envelope. So we can change the amount because a kick drum is, bow, you know, we have the high pitch and low pitch. If you look at a kick drum through a spectrum analyzer, yep. that's what you're going to see is a very distinct whoosh, movement. So we can do that in Kong really easy. And now we can start pitching it down. 
pitch it down even more. There's a fair amount of tweaking involved. We could darken it with the tone. Yep. And then if we want to get some, you know, thickness to it, let's use a high pass filter. And you might be saying a high pass on a kick drum. Why? And that would be because of filter resonance. It's a fascinating thing. We can get rid of all the subby stuff we don't need, but we can increase the fundamentals with a really resonant high pass filter. Yes. Wait, that is fantastic. Let's let's dwell on that for a second for people to understand what you mean. When you when you the point at Let me which get an you, analyzer up. Oh, OK, sure. That's a that's a great way to do it. That would, that would probably be helpful. This is something I talked uh, about in one of my tutorials the, called Signalizer. Oh, cool. Let's see. There we go. This is a free plugin called Signalizer. For those of you wondering, this is absolutely free, available for all platforms and is an incredibly handy tool for sound design and stuff. So um, filter resonance, we have a cutoff point, which any point after that is going to be altered by the filter. In a case of a low pass, it's aptly named because any frequency lower than that point will pass through. Everything above that will then be cut off. Your resonance is the amount of peaking to that cutoff point. So if we have a really, really resonant low pass, you can see we have this very distinct peak right here. Yeah. And if we move it around, and you can see there, we get this really big booming. You might not be able to hear that without a sub, but we can do the same thing with a high pass filter by finding the low end of the kick drum. Yep. And now we've got a big bassy we're, kick we're drum using, from a sound that didn't really have much bass. Right. It's it's actually sort of it's it's exciting and 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 accentuating those frequencies but using what is probably in some ways when the filter was being des designed a flaw of the filter, right? That it that it wasn't a perfect cutoff, that it had this little resonant bump at the point at which it's cutting off. And now over time we've kind of learned to harness that and use it to a sound design yeah. advantage. That's a great tip. Um, so let's see, we need to shorten this probably. That way we've got, you know, a nice thunky kick drum. Let's sure. probably turn this up. Yeah, it's I was going to say if quiet. you kick, yeah, right. Perfect. And there we go. We've got a nice thunky kick drum from a drawer. Yeah, and that let's is. let's make a quick snare. Sure, that sounds now good. what is when you're so you you have a certain drum in mind and what you just did there you were sort of scanning through I I guess theoretically you could probably tweak anything into oblivion but you're you're trying to sort of you have an idea of what field recording you're looking for to make the kind of drum you're <laughs> yeah and it's kind of like I said you know when we have uh, an end goal in mind we can say I'm going to make a snare drum so what is a snare drum on a really fundamental level it's a short snappy sound with a distinct transient so i need something that's kind of naturally short and snappy to save myself time because yeah we can make a snare drum out of white noise it would just be a lot more effort right so you know here we have some good candidates you know that's a big cool metallic sound yep that's a really long crunchy recording so you know we're looking for something that naturally has kind of what we're going for. So those all kind of have that snare drum feel. I mean, honestly, you could use this as your drum kit. Oh, yeah, right, right. But, you know, by shaping it a bit more, we can get something that's maybe a... I, I don't want to say convincing because I, I really don't think there's a wrong way to do anything, but sure. something that fits kind of a standard you know what you what you have right now sounds like a sort of quirky organic uh, fiona apple sort of production style whereas yeah. um what you could end up with is something that that doesn't necessarily give itself away in its organic origins but still sounds unique and you know there is something about in, in certain production styles there is a, a way to have something that sounds well this is a thing like almost with uh some of the friction patch, patches as well that if something sounds like something you recognize, but not quite. You can't quite put your finger on why it's not the thing you're sure it should be. That's almost more interesting to the ear than exactly the thing that you want it to be or not oh, yeah. nearly. The, it's like sometimes living in the uncanny valley can actually be a cool production trick. 
And that's why, like, uh, Parsec, there's some of those, like, re-synthesized sounds, and you can tweak them in such a way to where it's like, it is a guitar, but it's really not. And that's, like, a super cool thing. And, uh, you know, that would be a whole lecture on, like, additive synthesis and stuff and why it's super cool, but maybe another time. <laughs> so, okay, Cameron, we'll probably have you back yeah. on. Don't you worry. Uh, you're, you're a hit, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad. I hope everyone's learning stuff. Hopefully, by the end of the stream, I want you to go out and I want you to make something. Yes. Okay. That is my mission here today. Everything I'm going to show you can be done inside of Reason, outside of Reason. You could do this in Audacity. You could do it on hardware. You can just do it. Just go out and try it. I will. Because you're going to learn a lot. I will one up, uh, not one up, but I will. I'll piggyback of what you're saying and and tell people that if you do next week, I like I said next week I'm going to be just doing a solo stream with no guest. So I'll put out a Dropbox link, and if you make music using, a, you know, a, your phone to make some field recordings and manipulating samples and and doing something with it, we'll put it in the Dropbox link. I'll start the stream next week, and we'll highlight some of the stuff you guys have made. So yeah, that's that's an excellent call to action there, Cameron, and. Let's help people do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, snare. Um, so I, I think we're pretty much most of the way there. Uh, let's maybe pitch this. Uh, okay, so now we've got a nice tight sound, right? We could alter the tone, which this is a super, super handy control. Now we've got a bit more of that brightness. Uh, this is like the, the tone rattler. knob on a guitar, really. I mean, it's, it's a... Yeah. But which is also a deceptively simple control that is, it's not just EQ. I mean, there's like, it's, it's, I mean, it is, but it's, it's a little more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got a, a far more coloration value than just a typical EQ boost and cut. Um, so Rattler, I'm sure reason users are familiar with it, but if you're like a rack user and haven't messed around with this all this much, amazing tool for making snares or adding some air to like a kick drum. So we can take this. And because this this paint bucket, uh, it's a metal bucket, it resonates, and I don't know, my mom could explain it because she's like a mathematics professor, but a bucket resonates naturally, so we can enhance that with like the tone. And now we've got a really, you know, yeah. we have an organic sound, but we're blending some of the more polished aspects of it together. Absolutely. I mean, so if you could turn off those Rattler and Tone for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let me just make sure the level of this is good. I apologize if things are quiet. Oh, it's okay. hard because uh, with the interface, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's louder to me than it is to you. Totally. Um, I'm, so, I'm hearing you okay, which means they're hearing you okay. So That we have a short bucket sample. Yeah, yeah. And if we bring in the tone, we can enhance, because just critically listen for a moment. And there's a very distinct body to that. There's a boop. Yep. And we want to bring that out a bit. Yep. So we're enhancing that, because that is kind of tuned to the harmonic order of things happening. Um, and now we can add that air with a rattler. Yep. And now we've got, you know, a pretty cool snare. So like that kick drum, even we might go in here and add just a little bit of rattler. Oh, I mean, that, that now it's sounding like mic bleed the way that on an actual drum kit, when you hit the kick drum, yeah. the snares rattle. Because Kong has some physical modeling stuff in it, but you can actually do physical modeling with tools like this, because, you know, when we think about sound it occupies a space so we can simulate that space with a lot of different tools so rattler is a great way to add some of those kind of early reflection type yeah. sounds to it yeah i i love the the idea that you're basically doing physical modeling without getting into like you know physical like Math. when we made friction yeah exactly <laughs> like you know these very like esoteric algorithmic calculations that go into making friction work you're you're doing it sort of the it's like the home home guys lego version of physical modeling yeah um and it's and it works it is fantastic uh i guess let's finish this out so we we need a drum kit let's do like three quick percussions okay okay so I, there's a, a shaker which probably i think that might be a salt shaker actually a, a question let me ask you this question came in from pablo he says when you sure. say harmonics are you referring to the overtones uh harmonics can be any part of a sound there's a fundamental and then there's harmonics and overtones so when i'm hearing this 
I, I guess I'm hearing one of the overtones here because the fundamental of this is not going to be very pronounced because it's very quiet. Um, it doesn't have much amplitude. So I guess we're looking at, uh, let's turn on the spectrum analyzer graph. So on this scale, we can see Probably at around, what, 300 some hertz is probably the fundamental, so probably around 150 is really that body, so we can bring in this tone to sort of enhance that by adding a pitch that is tuned with kind of the tone we're hearing, because we could make it more enharmonic, where that's more of an overtone, but yeah. now we've got, you know, we're enhancing that fundamental, so it, it, it can just be any part of the sound really i'm just listening for something that stands out about it and trying to bring that out more right you know that's kind of the approach is finding the heart of the sound and what i want it to become you know mm -hmm. but that's a very good question and you know sound is really cool like any sound can be made from sine waves which is like <laughs> right it right. hurts my head sometimes to think about that i mean that's that's um, the additive synthesis concept yeah but yeah so let's make uh, just a couple of percussions here. Huh. Okay, let's make that a little shorter. Let's maybe tune it around a bit. Let's filter that because it's a little bit ugly. Let's bandpass it, actually. Get some of that. So you're band passing to cut some of the high and the low. It's going to get a little yeah. of that kind of high mid. Um, let's use something else. Sure, so that's swing set. And do something really extreme with the pitch. Let's get a resonator. Yeah, maybe not. Rattler, maybe. Hmm. And then filter that a bit. And for people to know that these effects are in serial connections, so it's like a pedal board yeah. on a guitar. So you're you're filtering the result of that rattled sound. And then, yeah, let's just make one more hi-hat to round this out. Oh, that would have been a way better kick drum. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's okay, though. So, yeah, hats and stuff are pretty easy. Just, you know, it's a high-frequency bit of noise. Yep. You, you say that, but actually, I think watching you do this as quickly as you are, I think sort of it indicates the number of times you've done it you make it look easy and you go oh, fast yeah. but but um but i think it also is encouraging for people to realize that like these aren't these tools aren't precious you don't need to be delicate with them you know crank a knob max it out see what it does you know turn that one up then turn on another it's knob. great way to learn what it does too yeah yeah if you just crank something and it sounds like garbage now you know what it's doing though yes <laughs> so now right. you know how i can utilize this in the future that's right um so i think we have a pretty well-rounded So that kick drum might be a little bit wimpy. <laughs> you want to? Well, we could back this up with like a Europa. Um, so maybe we'll try that really quick. Why not? All right. It's going to be a little bit tricky. I like where you're going. Okay. So we got to reset this and now you're, you're talking about what doing a sort of a synthesis drum thing. with Yeah. Yoruba? So I'm going to supplement this with a sub layer, which is pretty easy to do. We're going to need a, uh, let's just do the line mixer. You heard and of there guys, is a just short, supplement it with a sub layer. There is a shortcut that a uh, Navi Retlov who is in the chat told me about that. I totally forgot how to do, but that's okay. To do what I want uh, to like auto route some of this into a mixer. 
Oh. Well, if he knows the shortcut, there, he should tell me too. Yeah, because I, I was doing it and he was like, dude, that's really dumb. Don't do that. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you drag the mixer in first, that would that would auto route it, but um maybe yeah, there, there was a there was some shortcut he told me oh about. Like, you oh, know that's what? super cool i am getting a memory of this forgot. i think i have known i think i've even made a video about it there's yeah something where you can like it's like okay, oh, so right. gotta, i don't remember but there's there you're right you're right he's right there is a thing someone will let okay, us know in so the now chat we've routed sure. this um so now we're going to use the other outputs to do this so we're going to send outputs three and four from this kick So here we've got our Kong, Europa, and then the rest of our drums are, except Europa is going to react to every note, which is the tricky part here. So technically we shouldn't be doing this, but with this sound, we could easily supplement it with a sub layer. So let's use the envelope here. We'll turn off looping. We'll say it uh, envelope one to the pitch of engine one. Okay, and let's just make that really extreme. Yeah. Change oh. the speed. There you go. Ta-da. There you go. Now you've got a nice heavier drum, but right. since it's going to react to every note, we, we won't do that. And with the envelope. <laughs> but that's a really easy way to supplement. With the things. envelope, you had that. Did you have that sort of going down in pitch with the envelope? So do, do, do. Like it was actually diving in pitch or? Yeah. So if you look at the default envelope here, it's just, uh, we'll reset the device. So the default envelope is pretty much perfect for a kick drum. We have a, you know, and by speeding it up really fast, we get a very fast decay of, you know, right. and, you know, we can right. do that. That's and since this, um, since this is an MSEG, we can come in here and add this extra point to where we could control the amount of tone and sustain we get to that point. Yeah. But you can also reshape the curve, which is really important for kick design to get how fast that pitch is happening. And there's a lot of like micro decisions you have to make when doing sound. So a little bit tricky, but right. very doable with a bit of patience. A question so uh, I think comes in, in this says, could we use subtractor for the same effect? Is that that's oh, probably yeah. any, true? Any yeah. synth yeah that does a sine or triangle wave will do you know there's a thousand ways to do a just about anything so yeah don't don't ever take something as an arbitrary process there's like 12 ways you can do it that is true so we'll we'll just use a good old pulverizer here Nice. And let me toss a limiter on here so we're not blowing everyone's ears out. <laughs> These things could potentially get very loud very we're fast. Doing okay That's so a far. pro tip for all you sound designers out there. Always put a limiter on your sessions because I have exploded my eardrums. Really? Way too many times. Well, that and like I forget that I have something turned up really loud. Is that, I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is that specifically when you're in sound design mode, you mean? Or uh, because at some point you would want to turn that limiter off just to. I mean, probably in a mode, session right? too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So that's usually just to have a safety net of like, just in case something's turned up way too loud, you don't want to blow up your speakers or blow up your ears because you only right. get one set of ears. Take care of them. That is um, true. So yeah, I think we've got a pretty well-rounded drum kit there. We could vocode the snare. You know, you could do a whole lot of oh, man. things. Or form and shift with uh, uh, Neptune. I use Neptune on drums all the time. Really? Wait, which hang is on. Super uh, fun. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> move on. Pitch correction on drums. <laughs> what? Show me, show me what you mean. Um, okay, so Cameron's pitch correction explanation one on one. A lot of pitch correction, if not all pitch correction, works in the same way as grain does. It's granular synthesis. So with Neptune, we can't control the analysis window very much, but we can utilize some of the tools of pitch correction to reshape other sounds. So let's change this to voice synth. Um, turn off the transpose. And you can hear the grains there, which is kind of cool. So we'll take the formant control and turn this on. So we can get a very lo-fi. And we could shift this around. So we could change the snare. 
So that's almost, you know, a bit more D and B and there's yeah. 20 million ways to do things. So maybe we, I mean, that just one control bit. alone, I'm thinking how many times we all sit and, and we scroll through folders of snare options when we could grab one and start, you know, if we've got one that's doing something we like, but it's not deep enough or not, doesn't have that. Yeah. The D and B sort of, uh, the, you know, that drum and bass sort of sound just format shifted. That's amazing. Yeah. And then vocoder on drums too is good, good stuff. Like vocoding a sound with itself is an amazing way to add just some like, I don't know, squidgy ness to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is a drum kit in Kong with some sound you could easily make in 20 minutes. Yeah. With your phone, you know, go out, record stuff, bring right. it in. You could, you could you walk around it. the block, come home with uh, a drum kit on your phone and 20 minutes later be knocking out a beat with samples mm-hmm. yeah. that no one else has and uh you know and didn't cost you anything other than your time <laughs> right right so you know you just that's the thing I, I feel like i always have to tell people I'm like you know field recording is like really cool and stuff but the easiest way to think of it is you now have unlimited free samples forever yeah like you you will never again run out of samples because you can just yeah i mean that's a great challenge too like you mentioned is just your house your room whatever Make a sample pack out of it. Just yeah. push yourself. Find all the sounds you can make out of things and, you know, take that idea bigger. Go to Target and record stuff and turn it into something. Yeah. You know, there's all sorts of cool stuff around us. So, it's, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Fantastic. I uh, I hope people do that. I mean, I I want, I, you know, every time we do one of these streams, you know, I, I, I hope people take this stuff and go out and use it. And this one is so enticing to use. And something I realized too, is you're saying that you, you never run out of samples, but you also like what you've seen here is that you learn just through the process of doing this, you become a sound designer. If you're not currently a sound designer, there is no faster way to become a sound designer than to start manipulating samples like this, because you know, on the synth side of sound design, there's, you got a hill to climb over to understand <laughs> o- oscillators and wave shapers and, and envelopes and all the stuff that needs to go into synth sound design. It's great. People should do it as, as well. But if you're, if that seems daunting to you, tweaking samples like this is like such a easy bar of entry to get into of just like, I've got this thing. I want it to sound a little different. What can I do to it? I can pitch it. I can tone it. I can add effects. I can format shift it. I, you know, all the, all the things you're doing here, are open for people to try. I hope they do. Oh yeah. There's a bazillion ways to just change things. And yeah, like with sound design, don't ever think it's something you can't do. I mean, if I, if I'm doing it, trust me, you totally can. I I'm just good at fooling people into thinking like, I know what I'm doing. (laughs) That's (laughs) the real secret. (laughs) That's uh, (laughs) modest, uh, but, but not entirely true. You're very good at this. I'm, I'm really, I think everybody's enjoying this. I made 7 million really bad kick drums. Right. So now I can make a couple really good ones. That's you know? right. That's, that's right. That's the secret. <laughs> Should we but talk yeah, about, um, you had this enticing concept when, and I don't even know what this, this is, this would be new to me if we show people this. Um, you, you talked about this thing that you, it's sort of a term you invented called grain clouds. Yeah. Yeah. It's and fun, I, fun I teased stuff. it. And you can do it with the players. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I teased this as a as a topic for the stream, not knowing if we'd get into it, but we have some time, and I thought maybe we should. Um, what you want to maybe just show us and walk us through because it it yeah. builds off of the concept of what we've already been doing, right? It's, yeah, no, this it, is all really straightforward stuff. Um, so we're gonna get two racks open and an audio track. Let's grab uh, let's grab Europa. And let's grab a couple players here. Let's do the quad note generator. Always a classic. And feed that into a dual arpeggio. And we're just going to click through presets for a minute. Okay. Poppy. Poppy Poppy.sp, man. That's the one I always go to. (laughs) All right. uh, Let's just see if this is cool. So this is in base key of A. Um, and then what we're going to do is change this to minor pentatonic or major pentatonic. And the reason for this, for those of you that aren't super familiar with music theory, is that the pentatonic scale is five notes, like penta, like pentagon. So we have five notes that work with anything in that key, as long as you're not like changing keys or anything. So that's why like when you go watch a cover band at a bar and it's a bunch of like dads playing the blues, 
that's why they all play the pentatonic scale because it, you know, it sounds like it all works because can't it does. go it's wrong. Really, that's right. Yeah, it's a cool thing. So there's a fantastic have, video out there if people haven't seen it of Bobby McFerrin at a. It's like at a a neuroscience uh, convention and he, he gets the audience. What he shows is that the pentatonic scale is weirdly embedded in all of us. We just all know that scale. And so he, he sets it up. I won't walk through the whole video, but he sets up a thing with the audience with them singing along and they, he, without him prompting being prompting them for the next note, they know where the scale is going and stuff. It's a really, yeah, it's an interesting uh, video, but okay. So you, so, th- so now you could go, um, Minor pentatonic or major pentatonic, right? But depending on what key your track is. Yeah. Okay. So if you're working in a minor key, minor, major key, major. So we're gonna slow this all way, way down. We'll just use quarter notes and then maybe dotted sixteenths, because why not? And we'll play this for a sec. So I've got this on sequence mode. So when I play this, it's gonna start playing. <laughs> So this is coming out of the key of A. So that's an important thing to keep in mind because we are going to need that information later. Now, within your DAW, whatever that might be, you're going to resample this. So you could bounce this out or, you know, however you want to do it. Um, so I'm just going to record this into a new track and we'll record. Um, let's just record like eight bars. Sure. Have a quick rave, you know. And two more bars, all right. <laughs> I wasn't and sure. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to talk because I didn't know if you perhaps you had, I was going through some aggregate that I would have shown up in the grain cloud. So. Oh no. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've got our pentatonic thingy. Now what we can do is open a grain which is a granular synth. If you don't understand granular synthesis, the long and short of it is it works a lot like a sampler. You're going to take a sample, you're going to put it into a granular synthesizer, and a granular synthesizer is going to break that apart into thousands and millions and gajillions of tiny little segments of time. And the fun thing with granular synthesis, unlike our traditionally linear version of time where something happens and then it ends a granular synth can scrub through and rearrange and move these things and pitch them all individually and you have you know hundreds of these happening a second it's this really cool effect so with that in mind what we're going to do is take this and turn it into a pad that plays itself automatically because i don't know about you i'm super lazy with a lot of things and when i make these big atmospheric tracks i want pads that kind of do themselves and you know they'll scroll through different notes and that's the technique behind this is we have something that's got a bunch of different notes that all work with whatever i do on top of it and that's a function of the, of the pentatonic you're saying yep yeah so when i drag this in here we can play it back so this is going to be in A. So you can hear those little, little teeny, teeny slices. Uh, let's drop this down. So that's our sample. Yep. But let's slow this way, way down. Let's add a bunch of jitter. Maybe, well, maybe about this much. We'll move this somewhere in the center. Let's increase the grain length. Maybe the rate. We'll add more grains and that kind of smooths it out. We'll add the pan spread. So this is going to take all of those little tiny segments and spray them out all around you. And since this is going to be playing different notes, let's bring in the oscillator. So that way we have a stable tone center of everything to flow around. And now let's get some movement. So let's take uh, LFO1. We'll tie this to our position. We'll just make it move a lot. We'll slow it way down and we'll take the sample and glide waveform. So a sample and hold is just a bunch of random data and a sample and glide is just a smooth version between those values. Moving, so now we're just yeah, going to get Yeah, moving through this. a waveform, but, it, but yeah. at random amplitudes. But it's random, yeah. yeah. So now we get... Let's speed it up, maybe. So now for people, I'm going to zoom in. For people to be watching, what they should be watching is the actual playback head in the grain's uh, little sample, and you'll see this little blue triangle moving around. That is, that's 
that's what we're moving through the grains. And, and we get all these cool little details and textures. It's super fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much it. But now we want to make this something that's maybe a bit more like usable and cool. Because this, you know, this is neat by itself, but it's maybe just a bit. Nah. You know, it's just a big <laughs> fancy granular pad like we've all heard that a million times. So let's throw like a sweeper on. Um, let's get. Let's grab another sweeper and just turn it into a standard filter. That way we can maybe clean this up a bit and then we'll grab. Oh, let's grab an EQ. Right, well, let's run that into an RV 7000 because it's like the thing I love most in life. <laughs> and uh, oh, God, convolution reverb is because you can put any you can put any sound into it and use it as a reverb. Oh, for a guy who does fun. field recordings. I mean, it's oh, God, yeah, it's the best. Yeah, that would be a whole other subject. I, Absolutely. I, I, I'm very like reverb snobby. I love reverb way too much, but convolution is super fun. So let's get the infamous film score. Film score. Who doesn't love film score? It's been a classic now for <laughs> 15 years or something. We'll give that a big old decay and we'll just make sure we're cutting out low end after the reverb. This is very important or else you're going to get all this disgusting low end buildup. So now we can adjust this filter. Come on. Done. And you go, wow, that that must have taken so much time. What an amazing musician. The art, the science to it all. And really, it took me like five minutes. And like, oh, if you do man. D and B, dubstep, pop, yeah, dark play. Music, I just want to like, I want to swim in your grain cloud a little more. Can you just play a little bit? I want to hear some more of that. Uh... Well, we're gonna add a couple extra things. Oh, cool, for cool, some, cool. <laughs> for some cheese and grit, pulverizer. Got to have a pulverizer. Toss in an echo for a bit of space and movement with just a bit of drive just to add some character to it we'll do ping pong mode uh, let's you could do alligator super super fun to throw on pads and i guess let's toss that off with the audiomatic uh what, what was proto start the the instagram for audio i believe is what he referred to it as yes that's right instagram that is filter right. for audio that's that it. is correct so yeah, let's yeah. do like mp3 or vhs or something Now, so let's bring this out. There's some. And, I just had a uh, curiosity before you do this. There's some chatter that this may not be coming to people in stereo out in the on the world. I think it's coming to me in stereo. Can you just do a quick test? Um, yeah. Pan well, something. Ah, left I gotta or right? move my zoom window. Okay, left. Okay, that's all left, and then okay. So I'm getting it all left and all right. So guys, if you're not getting in stereo, let me know because I don't know why it would make it to me in stereo and then. Not to you in stereo, but if that's the case, you're not missing out. I mean, you're getting the gist of it anyway. This isn't like yeah. critical stereo sound, but. Um, so, yeah, that's a grain cloud. And on top of this, it's really easy to take like. Uh, radical piano because radical piano is beautiful. Um, and let's grab. He's not going to do film score. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you doing film score again? Shh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so, there was a time in life in when I was an RV seven thousand user where I was like, "Is there any other patch? Isn't isn't that just that that device is just called Film Score, right?" Yeah, it's just Film Score. That's just what that it's thing does. Yeah, you just the put best film sound. So, <laughs> um, so now we've got this kind of grain cloud with a piano, and this was in what was it A? So we can just yeah. noodle over this. Let's give that some more juice. Boom. Do cool you pads for days. I mean that's 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 super cool. Do you still have the um uh the drum kit 
open on another thing? Yeah. I, I want to check my audio really quick, just in case I forgot to do that thing. Which thing? To send it in stereo. Oh, but I'm getting it in stereo. Tomorrow. So no, I think it's... It, no idea. It's, Could be YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's got to be... It's on, on my end somewhere or on YouTube somewhere, but but I'm, it's making it into my headphone stereo. So it's... Uh, who knows? And then... You know what? Because this is a super quick technique. We won't get into it in insane detail, but just for the fun of it. Let's grab a Europa. And this is an amazing experiment you can all try like right now. And we're going to take... You heard the man. Right um, now. Launch reason. Uh, sure. And we're just going to drag a sound into it. And it's a wavetable. Oh, I see. Yeah, user-generated wavetables from any sample. That's right. <laughs> and, well, we've got the built-in... Sure. ...effects here. So let's make a quick beat. Mm, let's do it. See, I gotta find a groove. Sure, something like that. Some kind of like generic cinematica. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that term. Is that cinematica? That's a good uh, it's a good term. Cameron trademarked word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get I get five dollars every time you say it from now on. Oh man. Um, <laughs> Now that is the, is that Europa we're hearing? Yep. I mean, that is... Boom. Like, that is all coming... So, that's all coming from sounds and that, was... that, that you captured and manipulated and sound designed. Every single one of those sounds is unique. They've all been yep. made in the... I mean, the, the music and everything has been made in the last hour while I've been distracting you and we've been kind of chit-chatting and stuff. That is incredibly, a, incredibly powerful demonstration of what you can do by sort of taking control of the sound design on your on your end with with field recordings that's so cool oh it's so much fun yeah there's like i said sound is an adventure it's all around you just take the time to listen to it because what one of my favorite quotes is no matter how hard you try you cannot create silence and that's a super <laughs> inspiring idea wow oh man you've uh you, you you got me you got me thinking man that is that's cool what a great John John Cage or someone maybe said that I think I don't is that remember. Right? But... Ironically, a man who created silence as one of his compositions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so cool. Now don't close this because I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a task here, Cameron. On the outro of our stream today, I would I'd love to have this be our outro music and have you uh, kind of jamming out like you just were to that. So uh, keep let's that. Get a, let's get a better piano too. Well, okay, not, sure, I, sure. I, I type piano and I, I meant to get the rack piano because there's one in there i really like or, or what was it? uh july right the uh id8 and the mod wheel oh yeah 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 was it and was that july and on from kickback couture the show to set yeah yeah i believe she, she said something about like oh the mod wheel makes it really dark and i was like i did not know that i did not know that <laughs> exactly 
This is and that's why I love these streams. I have learned so many like little aha moments, and I live for those when I'm like, I get it. Like, okay, well, that's a thing. Let me tell you, I think you've you've been uh, the source of a few of those for a, for more than a few people I today. I hope so. That is always my goal when I'm doing YouTube stuff. If I can get someone out there to go make something, that's that's it. That's what I want is that light bulb moment where you say that's super cool and you make an awesome track with it. Right. You know, Let me tell you something. By the way, I mean, I. I not to not to dwell on this too much on the stream, but I'm I'm sort of behind the scenes high fiving with Stefan because we are hitting a concurrent viewer uh, record right now today. At uh, oh, hey. we got 350 concurrent viewers, which uh, for our average stream that is you know you're a plus, Cameron. Really. Take that, high school. I told you I'd do something eventually. <laughs> Now, That's now right. I gotta te- I gotta call my mom. Ma, guess That's what? Right. <laughs> That's right. I set the stream concurrent viewer record. I did it. <laughs> oh oh yeah. man, yeah, good stuff. So uh, okay, so what you gotta? Did you swap your? Yeah, you did. You did. You swapped to the IDA. Oh, you did some other stuff. While I'm talking, you're you. What did you throw on there? Uh, piano uh, with the mod wheel. Uh, uh 60-ish yep. percent friendly keys just default europa the echo uh dotted or sorry half notes uh ping pong uh, default rv7000 sweeper with a filter to make a pad that i well an instrument i can play alongside that uh europa wavetable so we've got now that's is there, the piano is in there too. It's, I'm hearing all that uh... very, very subtly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. We, we can make it a bit more prominent because I mean we want that that fullness of the piano with the airiness of Europa. There, you can hear it more. Yeah, yeah. Very '90s workstation synth. That's very like Yamaha motif, but you know, cheese is fine. Hey, the '90s is back, and aren't I glad? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, that, that stuff has all sort of come back in vogue in a sort of, uh, retro kind of way, which is, uh, not a bad thing. Well, listen, I've, uh, I've kept you hostage here on the stream and enjoyed every <laughs> second of my hostage taking with you. Um, but we will let, uh, we'll let you have the rest of your, uh, your day and everybody else have the rest of their day too. But man, like I, I've got, you see these two. These two things here. These are the light bulbs going off over my head. That's not <laughs> in the background. That's just the, you're just firing off light bulbs now. That's that's how I've been feeling today, and I hope everybody else has too. So, Cameron, thank you so I much so. for oh, for thanks joining for us. having me. This and, has been uh, an honor. Very exciting. I've loved these streams, and now I get to be on one. I did it, Ma. <laughs> well, you'll be you'll you'll probably be on one again. So uh, we're gonna keep you in the Rolodex because uh, I I think everyone has probably enjoyed their time with you. I certainly have. And you make it look easy, but you also make it look approachable. So that's, you know, that's two things that uh, I think are an excellent combo for people that are just kind of getting into sound design. Because sound design is a, it's a lofty concept that can be a little bit scary if you haven't done it. And so you stick to presets because someone else has done the work for you. But but you, then when you build your own presets, now you get to scroll through presets again, but they're yours. <laughs> ah, right. That is a, a feeling of satisfaction you can't explain until you've actually done it. So. Well, cool. Well, why don't you uh, line us up there with a little uh, uh, loop for the outro music, and I'll go ahead and uh, say our goodbyes to people while you uh, give us the the beat. What, what do you right. say? Shall we? We shall. Let's, let's do it. Excellent. Thanks a bunch, Cameron. Really appreciated your uh, being on with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Cool. So, guys. All right. Now, Cameron's going to play us out. And um, I, how cool is that? I hope, I really hope that you guys are, are out there and you're going to take your phones, you're going to do some field recordings. And I wasn't joking when I said next week, it's just, you just got me next week. It's all me next week. Uh, we're going to do a little music making using players. And why don't we start? I'm going to send out a Dropbox drop folder where if you make, if you do some music using this concept of sort of tweaking field recordings into either a drum kit maybe you try that grain cloud idea maybe do something else that we didn't cover but you're you're still working from field recordings then we'll put it on the on the dropbox and i'll start next week's stream we'll take a listen to them we'll see what you guys have done and um kind of showcase some of your work because i bet that 
what Cameron did with this is the kind of music that he does. It sounds like Venus Theory, but what you do with it will be what you sound like. And that is the beauty of this process, is that it ends up resulting in your sound using your sounds. So, very cool. I hope you guys had a good time today. I hope you learned a lot. And join me next week, just me next week, but well, you guys too, it's us, us next week, uh, for the Reason live stream. And until then, have a great week making some music, guys. I'll see you next week.